Well, it's October, which uh, means it's time for one of my favorite traditions on the channel, Metal Ween, where I review horror movies about metal music. Wow, dude, that was a pretty subdued introduction to Metal Ween. Yeah, I mean, I know I do this bit where there's a constant one-upsmanship to the introduction of Metal Ween, but eventually I'm gonna hit a wall. I can't keep doing one-ups every single year, so I've decided maybe this year we should tone it down a bit. Yeah, sounds like a good call. Yeah, I can do a subtle introduction to Metal Ween, right, James? <laughs> some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matt, sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Shock 'em Dead. What are the odds they would release a flavor called Thrashed Apple just in time for Metal Ween? Look at this, they got like guitar players and, and rock singers on there. This is perfect. Although I'm pretty sure Apple Mountain Dew is supposed to be called Gushin' Granny. Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and it's that glorious time of year where we look into the seemingly inexhaustible resource of horror movies about rock and metal bands. And today, it's about as obvious as you can get. It's a play on the Faust story. Shock'em Dead was released in 1991 by writer-director Mark Freed, one of only two movies he would work on. Despite the film's low profile, it has some names on it, including Tracy Lord and Troy Donahue, as well as the final film appearance of Aldo Ray, who passed away shortly after this film's release. It even stars Stephen Quattro as Martin, who's gone on to a respectable career both in acting and apparently as a UFC announcer. Also, the video quality is shit, but to be fair, the back of the Blu-ray warned us. So let's look into the totally original story of a man who sells his soul for rock and roll. This is Shock'em Dead. And to really set the tone, they open with the worst rendition of Purple Haze you ever did here. This is the band Spastic Colon. Cause their music is shit. Come on guys, that one wrote itself. They're auditioning guitarists and the lead singer mocks this one even though to me it seems like he did a fine job. The singer is the weak link here. Every fucking retard thinks he's a rock star. You know what they say about pots and kettles, man. Oh, and his name is Johnny. Because of course his name is fucking Johnny. Can we go one horror movie about a rock band that doesn't have a Johnny or an Eddie in it? I can't quite figure out what the symbol on the back of his jacket is. It's like half swastika, half peace sign? The tube top is a look, though. Gotta love the 80s. I know I said this came out in 91, but until Nirvana released Nevermind, it was still the 80s. Then we meet Martin, a nerdy kid who works at a pizza joint. Can't relate. And his boss berates him for his poor pizza-making abilities. Eight ounces of cheese, 18 slices of pepperoni, and six ounces of mushrooms! Man, six ounces of mushrooms. I, I top out at like three and a half. You're talking about a hero's dose. Editors note, a hero's dose of six grams, not six ounces, something I knew at the time of writing, but chose to leave out for the sake of the joke's coherency. Please do not do six ounces of shrooms. That strange voodoo lady. In that creepy old house on Thursday. What? Stop. I know you want to talk about how that's not what voodoo is, but if you start down that path, you're not gonna stop. You're gonna be there way too long. Just, just let it go, man. 
But this job does have its perks, like a peephole and co-workers who feel the need to get completely topless to change. Ha <laughs> ha, sexual harassment in the workplace? What an endearing character this guy is. Anyway, this stoner dude calls to offer Martin a chance to audition, but when his boss won't let him leave, he up and quits. Oh, Martin, will you look at that? Not gonna make a very good first impression, are you? Fuck you! <sighs> that is satisfying to see. Of course, the audition doesn't go well, but on his way home, Martin runs into the weird voodoo lady who promises him anything he wants. But it's only after all this passes away before they truly know who they are dealing with. I feel like this character is not the most culturally sensitive, but after last week, I'm willing to let it slide. So Martin sells his soul to become the greatest rock star of all time. Where have I heard that one before? And he meets one of the sickest looking Satans I've ever seen in a movie. And he wakes up in a big house with cool guitars, cool outfits, hot women, and the ability to play guitar. So he goes back to the spastic colon audition. Uh, yeah, this is a little confusing. He already has the house and the girls and the guitars and all that good stuff, but, uh, he isn't famous yet. So I kind of think the demon pact jumped the gun on that one a little. And yeah, he gets the gig. And he really rubs it in Johnny's face. Hey, I don't know who wrote those songs, but a monkey could follow those charts. Hey! I wrote these songs. Well, I'm sure you'll get better. After that, Martin learns the girls he's living with have all made similar deals with the devil, with Monique having a special curse where she has to kill people to stay alive. Something Martin finds he also has to do. Oh, and he can't eat food, only souls. Do you think he can still drink booze? Because if I made a deal with the devil to be a super big-time rock star and I had to be sober the whole time, deal's off, man, then and there. The weird voodoo lady comes by to give Martin the dagger to kill people, and he asks for a girl, Lindsay, the band's manager, citing the voodoo lady's promise of all his worldly pleasures. There's a way... You must use your gift to entrance yourself. I understand. Martin, how dense are you? You've been given the ability to play guitar really well. Use guitar to seduce her. That seems really obvious. Oh, and there's some ritual he has to do with a snake. I'm sure that won't come up later. Martin takes his band to his old pizza place and then is just a huge dick to the employees. What type of solidarity is that, Martin? You literally worked here earlier today. It's not even like these employees were mean to him and he's getting revenge. He's just an asshole. Honestly, I think the devil got gypped. Martin was going to hell anyway. Of course, though, this is a setup for him killing his old manager and stealing his soul. Which, speaking from experience, if you gotta kill someone, you could do worse than the manager of a pizza place. Alex, if you're watching this, that's a crack at my old Domino's manager. Pam, if you're watching this, fuck you. But he even manages to fuck that up, and Monique has to come help him. The next day at the gig, Martin totally shows up Johnny, who I guess just decides to leave after that. Also, he, he changes the song to be about date rape. Classy as ever, Martin. And I guess it's good Johnny left, because after the show, the band's just like, yeah, fuck him. Johnny's gonna be pissed. Hey, hey, who cares, huh? Come on. Meanwhile, Martin takes a girl out to her car alone. So where are we going, anyway? Well, my dear, you're going to heaven, and I'm going to hell. That's an odd euphemism for going down on someone, but I can kind of get behind it. Oh, he meant murder. That makes more sense. But Johnny catches him in the act, so Martin has to run him down. This is turning into a real Varg Vikernes situation. And you know, Martin's about as pleasant as Varg. He sets up a meeting with some record executives, naturally, and there's an Ozzy Osbourne joke. We gotta sign that guy. I haven't seen anyone like him since, uh, uh, what's his name bit that bat's head off? What was his name? But Martin uses his guitar to serenade Lindsay, who, it's probably worth noting, is engaged to the bass player. 
And maybe this is out of line, but I don't really know what he sees in her. Not trying to say this actress is unattractive or anything, but she's very plain looking and Martin knows nothing about her personality, so what's the appeal? Martin visits his old trailer and is shocked to find the landlord who threatened to kick him out kicked him out after he disappeared for three days. So of course he tries to kill his old landlord. Making you kill your boss and your landlord? Man, Satan is fucking based! Except Martin gets distracted by porn and the landlord gets away. Is this dude the worst or what? The next day, a cop shows up looking for Martin, and the girls have to kill him. Wow, you guys are not even trying to hide that you're murderers. I, I mean, I guess they have the power of Satan on their side, but still, maybe be a little more careful. Martin's real pushy with the record executives, but ultimately he gets the deal. In six months, you're gonna be the biggest rock and roll star in the whole world. You know, unless some other rock genre suddenly gets super huge and basically brings an end to the reign of 80s glam metal, but what are the odds of that happening in 1991? But suspicious of Martin, the bass player stops by to see if Lindsay is at his place, and instead catches Martin and Monique murdering a groupie. He shows up with cops seemingly moments later, but Martin says it's been a couple hours. So, we'll chalk that one up to awkward editing. The cops don't find anything, but they clearly weren't looking too hard as that dead cop from earlier was hidden in the closet. LA's finest, folks. But then Michelle, one of Satan's girls, decides to kill Lindsay out of jealousy, even though she was seemingly already sharing Martin with two other girls, and honestly, he didn't seem super interested in any of them. They were more there to boost his street cred. But Martin shows up to stop her just in time. Meanwhile, the bass player goes to see the weird voodoo lady to find out how to kill Martin, and she reveals he'll die if he eats. So the bass player gets some concentrated food. Very specific. But it kills Monique, so it must work. Martin is setting up for the ritual to convert Lindsay, but the only living girl is too weak to stop the bass player. So it's time for his showdown with Martin, set to some pretty sick guitar riffs, played very quietly. Dude, it's metal music in a movie about a metal band. Turn that shit up! And the last girl gets crushed by an amp. Amazing. But it just so happens to be the same amp Johnny left his keys and heroin needle on several days ago, and I guess just no one cleaned that up in the meantime? Which is fortunate for bass player, who uses the needle to inject Martin with food and his head explodes. <laughs> eh, I mean, on a scale of one to scanners, it's probably about a five. And the film ends with Voodoo Lady sitting next to the drummer at a bus stop. The perfect sequel bait? And that's Shock 'em Dead, a very silly metal slasher movie. As always, I have a soft spot for these metal ween movies, but this one is far from the best. It's fun and charming, but it's a bit tame for my taste. I'd like a little more bloodshed and maybe some more satanic antics. Still, I enjoyed watching it even if it's far from the most original metal ween pick, and maybe you'll get something out of it too. But the month's gotta start somewhere, you know. Uh, there's a metal ween playlist if you can't wait for the next one, and with that... I guess it's time for James to play us out. yourself a gig. <laughs> I know. You know, I'm kind of shocked you haven't run out of movies for Metal Ween yet. Oh dude, I am not even close to running out. Honestly, I had a hard time narrowing it down to just three.
Your dedication to this bit amazes and terrifies me.